Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Violent But True Bedtime Stories with me, the First Sergeant. Our story starts in Seattle, Washington. William Swenson attended Seattle University, where he studied political science. He would earn an undergraduate degree before he enlisted in the United States Army. He took a commission upon graduation from OCS at Fort Benning and would continue training at basic and advanced infantry officers courses, ranger school, and airborne school. Hua. He would be assigned to the 3rd Brigade Combat Team, 10th Mountain Division, where he would be deployed to the wondrous mountainous regions of Afghanistan. He was an embedded trainer for the Afghan Border Police, assigned to Task Force Phoenix. That had to be tons of fun. <laughs> Before this particular deployment, Swanson had already done some world traveling that would prepare him for this engagement, having done two previous deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan. However, this deployment was one that would test his vigor in and out of service. On 8 September 2009, Swenson would participate in the operation to connect the Afghan government with elders of the Gangal Valley along the Pakistan border. This operation had a lot of moving pieces. According to the Army's detailed official narrative, consisted of a nearly 106-man column. Five days earlier, the embedded training team had patrolled around Dam Dara, a village about one mile from Gangal. It was a well-received meeting with the village. However, when the team left on the return to the FOB, they were met by small arms fire from a few cowards on an elevated ridgeline. The elders of nearby Gangal renounced the attackers and invited the coalition forces to take census of the military-aged males and rebuild a local mosque. Swenson knew shit was about to get hairy. Upon SP, the word was passed that no close air support would be provided, and artillery would be provided by nearby forward bases. Sounds like a calm shit show to me, eh, kids? Not only that, intel was provided that the Taliban knew they were coming and was preparing for a spectacular ambush. Concerned that the mission was too great of an opportunity to turn the village into pro-coalition supporters, the mission went forward. It was just after dawn when the patrol met heavy resistance from an entrenched Taliban. Estimated forces of over 100 goat f <laughs> Heavy machine guns, small arms, and RPGs lit up the valley. It was a three-sided ambush, and the column was pinned down. To make the situation more aggravating, the Taliban was taunting the Americans over open radio channels. This pissed off Swenson. Initial artillery support was rejected due to the lame-ass ROEs, and Swenson had to maneuver or his team would be lost. An attached Air Force JTAC coordinator took control and radioed for air support. Denied. Swenson called for helicopter air support. Denied. Casualties were mounting, and personnel observed women and children supplying the enemy with ammunition. Swenson needed to break contact to reorganize the column. He radioed back for artillery to provide smoke for withdrawal, and was denied due to no standard smoke was available for the fire mission. He was f***. It was nearly an hour later of fighting before any support would come, and it came by the means of my favorite, white phosphorus. <laughs> by this time, the assault was becoming overwhelming. Snipers moved into flanking positions, and the heavy fire increased on the column. It was a montage out of every Vietnam movie we had seen. The sounds of whooping blades echoed off the mountainsides, and a column of helicopters appeared over the ridgeline. Meanwhile, a force of Marines, Task Force Chosen, also was engaged in the fight and had lost several Marines. The helicopter support allowed for them to recover their brothers. You may have heard about Dakota Myers and his story of valor. Same battle. Maybe a story for another time. Having ignored radio communications to surrender, Swenson maneuvered without cover to render aid to a wounded soldier. He stopped administering aid to give the Taliban a big f*** you by tossing a well-placed grenade at approaching enemy fighters, which provided him the ability to remove the wounded for an airlift out of the valley. During six hours of continuous fighting, Swenson would return several times to the kill zone, where he would recover three fallen Marines and one Navy corpsman. His exceptional leadership and dedication to his team successfully disrupted the enemy attack. The battle would last nearly nine hours before the column would return to friendly lines. It is rumored that the Afghan border police and local civilians tipped off the Taliban, in addition to the extra day of planning, as the mission was to be conducted one day prior. Swenson's Medal of Honor citation would be subject to controversy and spying that has been well documented before his ceremony on 15 October 2013. He would be the first living commissioned officer to receive the medal since Vietnam. He was quoted as saying, 
I look at this crowd and I see the strength of a nation, and I see the strength of a fighting force, one I fought proudly with. I look at my fellow Marines, Army, Navy, and Air Force, a team that I fought side by side with as brothers in the proudest moment of my life, and I am honored and privileged to know these men. Swenson, your acts of bravery were won for the annuals of history. This will defend.